Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 4.5, which is an introduction to parallel lines. Before we begin talking about parallel lines, we need to talk about planes. What is a plane? It's a surface such that if any two points on the surface are connected by a line, all points of the line are also on the surface. We represent this on our paper using what we, looks like a parallelogram, but this is representing the plane. And we typically use an uppercase script letter to designate our plane. So this would be plane B. There are two dimensions, length and width, to a plane, and they extend infinitely in both all directions. So even though it looks like it might end, it does not. It extends infinitely. And there is no thickness to this plane or any plane. couple terms dealing with planes would be coplanar. This is where points, lines, segments, rays, etc. lie in the same plane. Non-coplanar are points, lines, segments, and so forth that do not lie in the same plane. So looking at an example, we have plane B. We have a point A a line XY in the plane, as well as we have a line CD outside of the plane. So as a group, if I look at the group, point A, segment XY, and ray CD, these would be non-coplanar, because as a group, all three do not lie on the same plane. Looking at another definition, transversals, it's a line that intersects two coplanar lines and two distinct points. So let's go ahead and draw an example of this. So if I have two lines, I could have line A, line B, Then I would have line C, line C, your transversal, would be line C as it intersects two lines, A and B, that are in the same plane, and two distinct points. That would be your transversal. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, some words that we're going to be using here in just a little bit. Notice how we have line A and line B. In between those, that would be what we would call the interior outside of A. So above line A, below line B, that would be the exterior part. So if we go to our next definition, Parallel lines, these are again two coplanar lines, so two lines. Let's go ahead and use A and B. And again, they're in the same plane that do not intersect. We would use this symbol that looks like an 11, or in other words, two parallel lines to say that line A is parallel to line B. With parallel lines, we can also have a transversal. And again, a transversal, so in this case would be C, is um, a line that intersects two coplanar lines and two distinct points. So line C would be our transversal. And we also have symbols that we can mark on our diagram that stand for parallel lines. It's typically marked just by two arrows. You could also use double arrows to represent parallel lines. So that's how we would mark those on our diagram. Again, please notice in between line A and B, that's considered the interior. Above line A is considered exterior. Below, is, below line B is also considered the exterior. So if we take a look at our diagram below, 
we want to identify the following angles. So the interior, we're referring to, we have two lines, A and B. C would be our transversal. So the exterior would be above A and below B, but the interior would be in between them. So we would have angle one, angle two, angle five, and angle six would be in the interior. Alternate interior, again, we're referring to our four angles, but alternate interior means it goes across the transversal. So if we're looking at two, the alternate interior angle would be five moving across the transversal. So the other pair would be angle one and angle six. Consecutive interior are referring to same side of the transversal. So here we're referring to angle one and angle five. They are on the same side of the transversal as well as the other pair Angle 2 and angle 6 are same side or consecutive interior. Exterior, we're referring to again below line B and above line A. So that would be angle 4, angle 3, angle 7, angle 8. Alternate exterior, same idea as the alternate interior. So if we're referring to angle three, an exterior angle, it's got to cross over the transversal to the other exterior angle seven. So angle three and angle seven. And the other pair would be angle four and angle eight. Corresponding angles, slightly different. Corresponding angles refer to same side angles, one's exterior, one is interior, so angle three and angle six. Then we would also have angle four and angle five. So again, one exterior, one interior, same side, but not the supplement angles, not angle four and angle one. And then we also have angle seven and angle one. And the last pair is angle two and angle eight. Looking at our next example, I'd like you to pause, go ahead and identify the special angle pair for the following angles. Push play when you are ready to check your answers. Okay, so go ahead and check your answers. Push pause if you need to. Moving on to the next example. Again, we want to identify the special angle pair uh, for the figure. So if we look at angle one and angle four, these are an example of vertical angles. A couple things to notice when you're looking at these pairs of angles and this figure there are a couple different transversals. According to what your angles are, those transversals might differ. So what I suggest, if you're looking at your angles, so we are looking at angle two and angle 10, I would suggest drawing or highlighting the sides of the two angles. So I highlighted the sides of angle two. I'm gonna highlight the sides of angle 10. The side they have in common, which I will complete that, is the transversal. The other two sides that form the angle are the coplanar lines. Now you can easily compare angle two and angle 10. So we are not actually referring, apologize for that. We are not actually referring to anything on the right hand side so in other words, anything over here, we're not referring to that side of the diagram. We're only referring over here to two and 10. They are same side, one is exterior, one is interior. That, therefore, those are corresponding angles. 
let me go ahead and erase what's on the diagram here. So now, again, looking at angle 4 and angle 9, and if you need to, highlight those sides. Angle 9. In this case, we were referring to the exact same transversal. And referring to angle 4 and angle 9. They are interior. They're in between line L and line M. And they are alternating across the transversal. So they are alternate interior angles. Again, let me go ahead and erase the diagram. Looking at angle 6 and angle 3, highlighting angle 6, angle 3, here line L becomes the transversal, while line T and line, that looks like capital T, it looks like that got cut off, but the, that other line there are um, your coplanar lines, so referring to angle 6 and angle 3. They are exterior, in between those two lines is the interior, to the right and to the left would be the exterior, and they are alternating across the transversal, therefore they are alternate exterior angles. Again, let me go ahead and erase. Looking at angle 14. And angle 10, again the line they have in common. Now M becomes the transversal. So we're again referring to the bottom half of the diagram, not referring to the top at all. Looking at 14 and 10, one is exterior, one is in between the two coplanar lines, therefore that is corresponding angles. And last but not least, 7, angle 7, and angle 13. Now our transversal becomes line T, and our two coplanar lines are M and L, referring to 7 and 13. Same side, so in other words, consecutive interior angles. The last example, go ahead and finish this for class and we will check our answers when you get to class. This concludes section 4.